Righto, Taliota champs, forget the MacBook Air 15, um, yeah, I can actually review that quite easily. The MacBook Air 15 is like the MacBook Air 13 with a bigger screen. That's it. That's the review of the MacBook Air 15, and yeah, I don't want to minimise its impact. It actually is a really good laptop. Now we have a 15-inch sort of laptop that can, you know, do anything you want, all day battery life, with a really great big display, and yeah... It's excellent. It can do anything you can throw at it except gaming. Yes, you can actually game. This is a MacBook Pro 14. This is the Aero 14. And of course, on these Macs, you can actually game. There are certain tools you have now that you can, you know, game AAA titles if you want. But it's a big faff, right? It's not a great gaming experience just for the fact alone that these Mac displays, even though this one's 120 hertz, mind you, these Mac displays, they're very ghosty. This thing here... Look how sharp everything stays. This is 90 hertz OLED, okay? Just the fact that this has a nice 90 hertz OLED display over, say, just pretend this is a MacBook Air at 60 hertz, right? Mac displays have always been slow. They're great quality for, you know, desktop publishing, video editing, stuff like that, just watching content, but they're not good for gaming. This one actually is good for gaming because it is 16 by 10, 14 inch OLED display, beautiful, sharp, crisp, vivid, everything you want. I tell you what, the color accuracy that Gigabyte have is just amazing. Like, you just look at a Gigabyte display and you can just tell how bang on the colors are. And this, because it's X-Rite calibrated, I think usually they have like a Delta E of less than one. That's what they're sort of going for. And if you just have a look at the orange, I can see that's perfect, mate. But anyway, this is the Aero 14. And this is if you don't want to buy a MacBook Pro and you want sort of like a MacBook Pro quality Windows laptop, this is what you get. 14 inch compares to say a MacBook Pro 14 or a MacBook Air 15 or 13, sort of in between, right? So 16 by 10 display. And if I was gonna compare these displays, this is 120 hertz peak brightness of 1600 nits. This is about 650 nits, right? But the thing is here, this is locked at 500 nits for SD content. So most of the time, you're only going up to 500 nits. So if I was gonna say, this thing here just has a better display for just general purpose stuff. All right, once you crank on HDR, you know, the peak brightness, being able to get up to 1600 nits is just amazing. But most HDR content doesn't go over a thousand nits and this does 650 nits. And because it's OLED, the difference between the darkest and, you know, even though this is mini LED, but it doesn't come close to the contrast of OLED, right? The darkest point to the brightest point, there's a bigger difference here with this. And that translates into gaming too. So if you want a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air and you want something that can actually game because this comes with an RTX 4050, okay? It's good enough to play, you know, most titles, 60 frames per second, you know, high sort of settings there, especially with DLSS. If the game's more demanding you can use DLSS you'll be able to play all the AAA titles no problem on this thing and with the Mac you're gonna have to faff about with tools and this and that and just the display is not great for gaming this is what you get right don't compromise for your gaming if you're going to be gaming a lot, right? If you're not going to be gaming a lot, well, hey, go get a Mac if you want. But I mean, if you actually do want a game, it's better. You're better off with a Windows machine, just how it is. I mean, I remember the Steam Deck, right? Everybody's going crazy for it. I could not care less about the Steam Deck when it's running on Linux and I have to jump through all these hoops to make stuff work, you know, the way I want it to work. The new, you know, ROG Alloy is 10 times better than the you know, Steam Deck. Like, it's not even a competition because it runs Windows and this runs Windows. So if you want Windows, but you want the sexy, sexy sort of laptop here, you know, later 13th gen uh, CPUs, and look at it, it's beautiful. It is MacBook Pro quality for Windows. It is color accurate. Uh, 13700H processor in that, so the latest Intel processors. All right, the battery life is not as good. I'm not gonna lie there, the battery life is not as good. This, you'll get a lot more, but um, yeah. I like this laptop, it's got a good keyboard, good trackpad, the display is just out of this world. It's a 130 watt package, right? Small power brick and it's USB-C power, okay? So you can power this with USB-C brick. It's a 45 watt RTX 4050, so it's not the most powerful graphics in the world, but 
as I said, 60 frames per second, you know, it doesn't overheat. Uh, latest titles, that's what you're going to do with this thing. Oh, that's 1080p, of course. The sound, it's okay on this. It's not as good as the Mac, I will say that. Uh, you have all the ports, right? So as I said, HDMI, you have USB 3.0, and you have a mini SD card reader. I wish it was a full-size SD card reader, and then it would almost be perfect. So here it is. If you want a Windows laptop for whatever reason you want a Windows laptop but you want it to be the quality of the Mac in terms of design etc this is the way to go. Alright so the battery life isn't as long as these Macs but I mean the star of the show really to me is this OLED display. Um, 90 hertz, yeah really good and it's a nice 1800p crisp resolution there so yeah. Let me know what you think. Catch you next one. Telly. Ho.